we are going to start talking about some of the kinds of jet engines which had actually appeared uh, more than 60 years back uh, in world of jet aircraft. However, uh, for various reasons uh, they were kind of superseded by the uh, gas turbine based jet engines which we have been talking about over this lecture series. However, it is um, probably right that we should have a look at some of those uh, jet engines which were indeed jet engines and they actually flew along the same time when the gas turbine based jet engines first flew uh, and they were kind of disfavored by various reasons uh, for various uh, uh, manufacturers and uh, aircraft builders. However, they are coming back. They have reason to have their own uh, applications uh, where they could be useful even today and uh, we should have a look at some of them how they function and how they can be deployed for flying aircraft. In some sense, these were simpler jet engines and that is indeed one of the reasons why those jet engines appeared uh, before the gas turbine based jet engines because the gas turbine based jet engines as we have seen over this lecture series are indeed rather complex machines. They do have all kinds of complex uh, parts like compressors and turbines which make the engine extremely uh, heavy, bulky and of course, very complex to both design and analyze and finally, control during flight. Much simpler versions of jet engines appeared alongside after the World War II immediately or around the time of World War II by various uh, uh, manufacturers essentially to begin with for the purpose of the war itself and later on they were flown by various people and as I mentioned uh, they were not favored in comparison to the gas turbine based jet engines and hence they were not used for regular flights either for military or for transport uh, aircraft purposes. However, they are indeed being looked into again for various kinds of aircraft applications uh, by various manufacturers both in Europe as well as in uh, USA. Now, these engines which go by the name of pulse jets, ramjets and version of ramjet which is known as cramjets are very simple engines and we will have a look at these engines over the last uh, next 2-3 uh, lectures and we will take a good look at them and we will find that they actually do have application potential under certain circumstances in certain kinds of aircraft and those kinds of aircraft actually are looking into these engines, the modern versions of them, the improved versions of them and how they can be deployed for certain aircraft flights. So, this is what we will be doing over the next few lectures looking at ramjets, pulse jets and scramjets, how they function, what kind of aircraft they are used, they have been used in the past and what kind of aircraft they are likely to be used in future. We will look at how they operate we will look at what kind of thermodynamic cycle they actually are used for and finally, we also look at their performance and some aspects of how they are designed over a period of next uh, 3 or 4 lectures. So, let us take a look at these uh, jet engines which are pulse jets, ram jets and scram jets. Some of these engines which have been as I mentioned around for more than uh, 50, 60 years were developed essentially for the purpose of uh, military purposes. Uh, now, of course, many of the aircraft and many of the engines were indeed developed for uh, military uh, applications to begin with and even today many of the new technologies are often used first in military aircraft which are indeed the more demanding kind of aircraft and hence require more demanding and more challenging kind of engines to be designed and built. 
So, during World War II, certain kinds of ramjets and pulse jets were used uh, during the war as uh, war material. Also, because as I mentioned, <coughs> they are very simple kind of jet engines. And at that point of time, it was a bit of surprise to the other party, and in a sense, they were they must be considered as successful deployment of uh, jet engines. Also, one must remember at that point of time, the gas turbine based jet engines, which we have been talking about, had not been developed uh, so much, and as a result of which, these pulse jets and ramjets were considered to be reasonably competitive to the gas turbine based jet engines or the turbojet engines as we call them. So, let us take a look at what these ramjets and pulse jets are all about and exactly how do they function. To begin with all heat engines and all uh, jet engines uh, have to have some kind of a thermodynamic basis in so far as they are all uh, heat engines. Now, these ramjets operate on the same cycle as uh, turbojet engines and we shall be looking at this uh, thermodynamic cycle uh, probably in the next lecture. Now, the name ramjet engine is given with a purpose. The purpose is that the word ram essentially refers to the fact that certain amount of air compression by the ram effect is being used here and hence the entire compression that is needed prior to the combustion is effectively done by the ram effect, which we have studied in the course of our turbojet engine uh, series uh, lecture series. So, the entire compression is done by the ram effect and it occurs in the intake of the uh, uh, engine and it produces significant rise in static pressure sufficient to allow the flow to go into the combustion chamber. Now, as we know in jet engines, we need to burn the fuel preferably in a high pressure and higher the pressure at which the fuel is burnt, faster is going to be the burning process, more efficient is the burning process and hence this high pressure is created and then the fuel is injected into the air stream and allowed to uh, go through the combustion process during which of course, heat is added to the working medium which is again air. And then this mixture of uh, burnt fuel and air is, uh, is essentially a gas now. This mixture of uh, burnt fuel and air which is then expanded uh, through a nozzle system to the atmospheric air which is uh, under atmospheric conditions. And this expansion of course, creates the jet uh, which helps us produce the final thrust. So, this is uh, in a simple way how the ramjet is uh, expected to uh, create uh, thrust for flying of aircraft. If you look at a very simple diagram of a ramjet, what it consists of is uh, a flow coming into the <coughs> engine. And what we see here is that the expected flow is a supersonic flow. <coughs> we shall see as we go along and it is not it is probably appropriate to uh, you know state that uh, a ramjet would be more useful under supersonic flight conditions. And as a result of which uh, what we have shown here that the flow is coming in with supersonic flow. However, the flow needs to be uh, decelerated or diffused substantially to a subsonic flow to affect the combustion process. And this combustion process is uh, as we all know is, is essentially done with the help of certain flame holders which are shown over here. Uh, this arrow shows a number of flame holders and then the combustion is uh, kind of held here uh, in this zone uh, under subsonic flow conditions. And then the hot gas is uh, fed into the uh, nozzle which is often a convergent divergent nozzle and then the hot jet goes out to create a jet thrust. So, this is in simple how the ramjet indeed operates. There are various facets by which the ramjet operation can be looked at. 
So, let us uh, look at some of those uh, various points which uh, make the ramjet engine indeed operate. Ramjet engine like any other jet engine essentially produces uh, power or thrust by increasing the momentum of the working fluid essentially by induction of energy by combustion of fuel. So, that the momentum of the exhaust jet uh, substantially exceeds that of the incoming air and this needs to be done on a continuous basis because for flying of an aircraft you need to produce thrust on a continuous basis. Now, in contrast to the other kinds of air breathing engines that we have studied earlier, the working cycle or the working of the engine is accomplished without additional components of compression or expansion. And that means, there is no need for a compressor or a turbine in this kind of <coughs> jet engine. And it also does not require <coughs> a kind of enclosed combustion, which we have seen in turbojet engines, where you have can type or cannula type of combustion. Now, that kind of combustion is not required. This combustion is entirely uh, through the entire uh, duct through which the flow is flowing. So, it is uh, it's not even annular, it is a full duct combustion process and this uh, allows the combustion process to be carried out over the entire duct of the uh, ramjet engine. So, the entire process of compression, expansion and combustion in ramjet engines are quite different from the other kind of turbojet or turbofine engines that we have done earlier. There is no compressor, compressor here, there is no turbine here and the combustion process is done over the entire duct. So, it is neither cannular nor annular and the entire duct chamber is essentially used for combustion and thereafter as essentially a jet pipe before the entire flow is uh, released to the nozzle. So, the ramjet engine essentially uh, gets rid of uh, compressor, turbine and uh, all kinds of heavy combustion systems. And hence one can say that ramjet engine is mechanically the least complicated air breathing engine for thrust production for flying of vehicles. Now, for aircraft of thrust production, we have gone through various versions of turbojet engine and turbofan engine. The ramjet engine, which is also a jet engine, is easily the least complicated of all kinds of air breathing engine. Remember, it is still an air breathing engine, it is still using air as a working medium and hence it is it's fundamentally still remains an air breathing jet engine uh, for thrust production. The high pressure grass which has been created through the combustion process, the pressurization was done by the intake process and the combustion created the gas. Now, this high pressure high temperature gas is now expanded through a nozzle, which essentially converts a low subsonic flow in the combustion chamber or coming from the combustion chamber into a supersonic jet. The minimum jet speed at which it goes out is uh, sonic and most likely it is going to be uh, supersonic. And then this mixture of air and burned fuel that is the gas is normally exhausted through a convergent divergent nozzle C D nozzle. You have studied various kinds of nozzles in the nozzle chapter and the C D nozzle as you remember is one of the kinds of nozzle which allows the flow to be converted from subsonic to clear supersonic flow. So, that is the kind of nozzle that is normally used in uh, ramjet engines. The exit pressure at the ex exit phase of the nozzle is likely to be of the same order as the ambient pressure or the atmospheric pressure and which means that somewhere in the nozzle in the C D nozzle the flow will be reached uh, which is ideally likely to be in the throat area and the choking pressure where wherever it is reached the sonic condition is reached is uh, somewhere near the throat as I mentioned is likely to be higher than the atmospheric pressure. So, the choking pressure is quite often higher than the atmospheric pressure. 
However, at low supersonic flights, if the ramjet is being used for low supersonic flights, the exhaust may be sonic, which means just sonic through a simple convergent nozzle, which is the simplest kind of ramjet engine one can think of using just a convergent nozzle. However, at Mach number very high Mach numbers at Mach number 5 and above, the unit becomes essentially what is now known as supersonic combustion ramjet or scramjet in which the combustion itself has to be carried out in supersonic flow. That means, the flow in the combustion area deep inside the engine is still supersonic and the flow has not become sonic anywhere inside the jet engine. And now, that kind of uh, engine is essentially referred to as scramjet engine <coughs> and we will be studying scramjet engine uh, in the course of this uh, lectures. Let us take a look at what are the uh, certain advantages uh, of uh, typical ramjet uh, or for that matter scramjet engines for use on various kinds of aircraft. Now, as we see here, as we increase the Mach number of the flying aircraft, the typical uh, specific thrust that is created by various kinds of jet engines essentially sh show a characteristic. And these characteristics are shown here with reference to two different kinds of fuel. One is the normal hydrocarbon fuel that is used in all kinds of turbojet engines and the other is the hydrogen fuel which often uses hydrogen and liquid hydrogen and probably or preferably liquid oxygen. So, let us take a look at these two kinds of fuels. In case of uh, uh, aircraft usage, the hydrogen liquid hydrogen will be used along with air which will essentially be the oxidizing element. So, if we use a hydrocarbon fuel, the blue uh, line here or the blue zone here shows that various kinds of turbojet engines once their Mach number, the flight Mach number increases at flight Mach number of the order of 2.5 to 3, slowly their uh, specific thrust creating capability uh, goes down and somewhere over there, the ramjets uh, essentially uh, become more and more useful. The turbojet thrust creating capability is going down and the, and the ramjet thrust creating capability is somewhat higher in the range of Mach number say from uh, 3 to 5 or 6. Above Mach number of 5 or 6, quite often you would find scramjets essentially are more useful as the thrust creating capability of the ramjets are even lower uh, at that kind of high, very high flight Mach number and they start dipping below the scramjets and scramjets become the better thrust creating uh, engines at that kind of flight Mach number. Of course, as we know if you go to flight Mach number of 10 or above, you would probably need to use rockets to create uh, sufficient or good thrust for flying of uh, vehicles. On the other hand, if you use a different kind of fuel that is hydrogen fuel liquid hydrogen using air as the oxidizing element and still air as the uh, working medium. What we see here that essentially uh, they do create more thrust, but as we know the turbojet engines normally have not been using hydrogen as a fuel because hydrogen is essentially a very light uh, element and hence to carry it around you need a lot of space or a lot of volume in, in an aircraft. So, typically uh, most of the aircraft uh, as of today uh, do not use hydrogen fuel as of now for creation of thrust, even though as we can see here, their specific thrust creating capability is indeed uh, much higher. Again at higher Mach number at around Mach 3 or above, the ramjets essentially start showing better thrust creating capability than the turbojets which are now going down and the ramjets hold forth from uh, about Mach 3 to Mach, point five, uh, Mach 5 during which its thrust creating capability is the best amongst all kinds of jet engines. Above Mach uh, 5 or 6, the scramjets essentially become the uh, most uh, efficient uh, thrust creating 
engine uh, and it can hold forth for creating thrust up to almost Mach 20. So, if one is using a hydrogen fuel and uh, one uses cramjet engine, that kind of an engine with hydrogen fuel uh, <coughs> would be very good thrust creating uh, engine or a power plant for flight, uh, flight of vehicles up to Mach 20 or so. And, and that is where uh, many of the applications are being uh, used uh, today for scramjet engines that uh, new uh, aircraft which are coming up which are called uh, hypersonic aircraft. These are the aircraft where scramjets engines are being deployed as thrust creating engines. So, as we see here depending on what kind of engine you have, what kind of aircraft you would like to make use of. Uh, on which you like to put the power plant and at what flight mark number they would be flying uh, for most of the crews. These are the uh, uh, considerations which decide what kind of engine you are going to use, whether you are going to use a turbojet engine, whether you are going to use a ramjet engine or whether you would like to go for a scramjet engine. Also as we can see here the hydrogen which is uh, a light element. Uh, actually indeed creates a higher specific thrust that is thrust per unit mass flow and as a result of which uh, <coughs> they indeed are uh, better fuels. Uh, so far uh, for various aircraft applications uh, they have not been used so far as I mentioned because they are very light and you need a lot of fuel tank space to carry them around. However, for ramjets and scramjets which are for uh, a small duration uh, flights, uh, hydrogen fuels are very competitive uh, and uh, it is quite possible that hydrogen fuels will be used. But as of now, the experimental and other aircraft which are being flown with ramjets and scramjets are still using the hydrocarbon fuels and one of the reasons is the chemical kinetics of hydrogen uh, hydrocarbon fuel is very well established over uh, more than last 50 years whereas the hydrogen fuel even though it is a cleaner fuel its uh, chemical kinetics is still uh, in the process of getting established apart from the fact that it is a very light fuel. Let us take a, a look at a color uh, uh, picture of uh, what a ramjet would look like during its operation. It would typically have flow coming through the intake system which would typically have a spike like this a central bullet uh, which will negotiate with the incoming flow which is likely to be supersonic and then it undergoes supersonic diffusion and then subsonic diffusion and at the end of the diffusion process uh, then we have the burner and through the burner the flow then is released through the nozzle in hot gases for creation of thrust. So, this is a, another very simple uh, uh, with a little color uh, explanation of uh, what is likely to be happening in a typical uh, ramjet engine. Let us take a diagrammatic schematic look at what is happening. As I mentioned the flow comes through the intake system and the intake system would have a central uh, bullet like this which is uh, placed there essentially to negotiate the supersonic flow that is coming in. Now, as you well know the supersonic flow the moment it hits a, a solid body and in this case the solid body has to have a, a very uh, sharp uh, cone over here a sharp nose which immediately creates a shock system. Now, this shock system is what is known as the intake shock system and these uh, part of them are the internal shocks and uh, it is possible that one of them would be anchored between the nose cone and the uh, lip of the engine uh, and the flow comes through these shocks and in the process of uh, flowing through the shocks the flow get diffused and finally through one uh, normal shock the flow finally becomes uh, a subsonic flow and then the rest of the diffuser essentially is a, a subsonic diffusion process before it comes into the combustion zone where as you can see the flame holders are placed there and the flame uh, holding process is similar to what we have done in the combustion chapter earlier that the flame needs to be stabilized 
uh, and essentially to be held so to say in one place anchored in this place. So, that the combustion process is done under a controlled situation and once this combustion is completed the hot gas is then released to this nozzle which as I mentioned uh, now has sufficient pressure through this uh, compression or ram compression process it has developed a sufficient pressure and it has now been uh, infused with sufficient amount of combustion or heat release. So, that at the uh, face of the nozzle intake face of the nozzle it has very high pressure and very high temperature and with this high temperature and pressure when it is released through the nozzle it produces high velocity jet. So, the expansion and exhaust is normally through a CD uh, nozzle and as we have done before to have a CD nozzle you must have sufficient pressure and temperature to begin with uh, to make full use of a CD nozzle. So, this is how a ramjet engine actually uh, operates. Uh, it has various components the intake which needs to be designed very accurately uh, for the particular flight Mach number uh, at which it is likely to be flown uh, at which the aircraft is likely to be deployed and this uh, would indeed uh, decide the shape and size of this uh, central bullet cone and the angle at which this uh, uh, nose cone is to be created uh, will decide of course, the shock that is created and those shocks will decide essentially the rate of diff supersonic diffusion that takes place and of course, the final aerodynamic efficiency of this intake system. If the supersonic flow and the nose cone geometry are not in um, consonance with each other, if they are not matched to each other, the shock system that will be created will be highly loss making shock system and as a result the intake efficiency will be very low and that will of course, indeed uh, tell on the overall jet engine efficiency, the ramjet engine efficiency and the efficiency would be lower. So, we need to create an intake system which is uniquely designed for that particular flight Mach number at which this ramjet engine is likely to be flown with the aircraft. This is uh, the German uh, uh, V2 uh, bomber in which uh, uh, ramjet engine was uh, utilized and as you can see here it is a very simple aircraft in which the flow came in right from the nose and uh, indeed this was not a supersonic aircraft it was actually a subsonic aircraft. A more modern uh, ramjet powered supersonic aircraft which is being uh, designed uh, shows that you do have this uh, nose cone at the front a sharp nose cone which essentially uh, negotiate the supersonic flow. The shape of the aircraft tells you that it is a blended body wing body uh, aircraft which is typically designed for a uh, high Mach number that means the Mach number of this aircraft is likely to be uh, above Mach 3 and hence the shape of the aircraft uh, is typically uh, a blended body uh, shape and the ramjets which are uh, being shown here uh, sort of uh, uh, corresponds to the kind of ramjet that we have been discussing. And at the back over here there is a, a weapon that has been deployed over here. So, this is the kind of uh, ramjet powered supersonic aircraft that people are thinking of. Uh, where it will be flying somewhere around Mark 3 or Mark 4 uh, over a certain distance and is most likely to be for military applications. Let us take a look at what kind of pulse jet uh, engines which uh, people have used before and uh, how do they function. Now, pulse jets in, in a sense are similar to ramjet engine in simplicity in the sense there is there is again no compressor, there is no turbine and there is no enclosed uh, combustion chamber. Again we have an open combustion chamber and this kind of engine was used again by the Germans uh, during World War uh, uh, in a V2 a V1 aircraft which used the pulse jet. You can see here the pulse jet engine is uh, mounted over here and uh, it uses compressed air source for initiating the uh, engine which we will discuss in a few minutes and this is the shape of the German V 1. 
So, uh, this is also has been used uh, during the world war by the Germans and we shall see later on what kind of use they are likely to be if they are to be used in a modern aircraft. Let us take a look at how the pulse jet engines indeed operate. As I mentioned it is again a very simple uh, kind of a jet engine in so far as it is still a jet engine and it is using uh, air as working medium. So, the air comes in from the front and uh, it goes through a, a set of valves through which the air is allowed to come in, in uh, intermittently not on a continuous basis. So, as the name suggests it operates in pulses and the thrust is created in pulses. So, uh, the air is allowed to come into the uh, jet engine intermittently and once it has uh, been allowed to enter uh, <coughs> soon thereafter there is a chamber over here at which uh, the air is uh, at a very low velocity or more or less still and <coughs> when this valve closes this chamber essentially has uh, more or less still air in which the fuel is burnt and the combustion takes place. So, this is the combustion chamber when which uh, the combustion takes place more or less in still air and then this uh, combusted gas is released through the long tail pipe and then released through a nozzle. There is indeed going to be a nozzle system over here for creating the jet. So, the pulse jet engine operates under situations where the flow is allowed in intermittently at pulses and as we shall see as we go along that in the early days <coughs> the pulses used to be of the order of uh, <coughs> 50 pulses per second. The modern pulse jet engines have been uh, going much higher than that of the order of few hundred pulses are possible. Uh, <coughs> there are mechanical limitations of creation of the pulses and this mechanical limitation of the pulses essentially is being pushed to higher limits over the modern pulse jet engine development. So, some of these developments are being uh, done in the modern era to bring the pulse jet engine to the modern uh, <coughs> aircraft flying experience and as I mentioned the pulse jet was indeed used uh, 60 years back uh, during the world war. So, these are the various kinds of development that are taking place. Let us take a look at how this pulse jet engines actually function. The air is drawn into a system through which the uh, through a set of valves as I mentioned and these valves operate in intermittently and then fuel is sprayed into the combustion chamber. Now, the fuel spray we have done in the combustion chapter it tells you very clearly that the fuel spray has to be atomized, they have to be evaporated, they have to be mixed. So, all that phenomenon or phenomena of combustion that we have studied in the combustion chamber chapter are indeed valid also for ramjets and pulse jet. So, the combustion would have to be carried out more or less the same way that we have done in the combustion chamber uh, combustion chapter earlier. So, once the combustion occurs it is an enclosed uh, chamber now unlike uh, even ramjet. So, in that enclosed chamber once the combustion occurs the pressure builds up. Now, normal uh, thermodynamics will tell you that once you have increase of temperature in an enclosed space any volume of air or gas will also undergo change of or increase of pressure. In a flowing fluid in a ramjet or in turbojet engines that does not happen because it is a continuously flowing fluid. But in a pulse jet engine what has been done is something very similar to that is done in piston engine that the air is captured in a volume and in this volume the fuel is sprayed and the fuel spray is allowed to burn and the combustion takes place and in the process not only the temperature, but the pressure also goes up. So, the process of increase of temperature and pressure now occur in a enclosed volume and essentially it is more or less like a, uh, a mini explosion and during this process as I mentioned the pressure goes to very high uh, values. 
Now, this high pressure, high temperature gas can be released through the jet pipe and through the nozzle to create your thrust. So, one can see here that slight details of the operation of the pulse jet are different from that of the ramjet. Now, one of the major difference that comes out is that for creation of thrust, you are not using flowing fluid, which means that a pulse jet engine can help an aircraft to take off from ground, which a ramjet engine cannot. A ramjet engine works on ram effect. Now, once you need to create a ram effect, it is necessary that you have a certain uh, velocity of the flow coming into the intake, which creates sufficient ram effect or pressurization. And as we know, higher the pressurization, better is the combustion and of course, indeed better is the jet creation. In a pulse jet, there is no ram effect. The, it is not necessary to have a ram compression for creation of pulse jet thrust. The flow is allowed to come into the combustion chamber and then effectively it is entrapped in the volume of the combustion chamber by closing the valves. Once the valves are closed, there is no way air is going to go back anywhere and hence you have a entrapped air and the combustion is carried out into this captive air volume inside the combustion chamber. And this allows that the engine can be used on an aircraft even for takeoff, because de during takeoff as you know the ram effect would be very small and hence typically a ramjet engine cannot be used for taking off uh, when it is mounted on an aircraft. Now, this is a problem with the ramjet engine that it is a very poor engine for aircraft takeoff. And this problem is solved if you are using a pulse jet which can be used for takeoff purposes. Uh, but on the other hand, the problem is that pulse jet engine may not be a very good engine when one wants to use it for uh, high uh, Mach number flights because the flow in indeed would be coming into the uh, valves at very high uh, pressure at very high flight Mach number there would be some kind of a ram effect and then the operation of the valve would become mechanically uh, more and more difficult as the pressure in front of the valve is going to be higher and higher and, and operating the valve in a certain control manner would indeed become more and more difficult. So, as we can see now the pulse jet engine is more useful under uh, low flight Mach number conditions, whereas ramjet engine is typically more useful under high flight Mach number conditions, typically at flight no Mach numbers which are supersonic and as we have seen they are actually more competitive at high Mach numbers above Mach 3, where the pulse jet engines are uh, useful at low Mach numbers where they can be deployed for creation of jet thrust. So, let us take a look at a little more details about how the pulse jet engines operate. To start the pulse jet engine, it is necessary to initiate air flow through the duct, often with the help of a high pressure air source. Now, this is what is, is uh, necessary to be done, because the pulse jet engine does not come in with a ram uh, effect it does not come in with a high pressure and to initiate the flow through the duct, it is often necessary to create a flow, because there is no flow to begin with. Uh, let us take a quick look at how the pulse jet, uh, you know the flow here is entrapped, there is no flow and to initiate the flow from the combustion chamber from high pressure, high temperature uh, zone through the tailpipe, uh, through the nozzle, through the and out to the jet requires a flow to be established. And that is why in the German V 1 uh, en uh, engine or V 1 aircraft, we see here a compressed air source which is carried inside the aircraft and this compressed air is then supplied into the jet engine and fed into the pulse jet engine behind the uh, valves to initiate the flow. So, pulse jet engine require that air flow supply, high pressure air flow supply for initiation of the flow. So, 
that is one of the uh, needs. It does not need a compressor, but it does not have a ram effect. So, something else is required in terms of a high pressure air source to establish or initiate the air flow. Once it is initiated, it can uh, be sustained on its own, but the initiation requires a compressed air source. Now, once it is started and injected with the fuel, the entire device is essentially self sustaining. You do not need uh, the compressed air, for air source on a continuous basis and there is no need for uh, sparking of the fuel also on a regular basis like it is done in piston engines. Like all other jet engines that we have studied earlier, the flame is uh, continuous and self sustaining. It does not need uh, sparking or uh, initiation or ignition again and again. So, the fuel flow if it is held steady, <coughs> the ignition is uh, continuous and is accomplished uh, by the flame, uh, which sustains uh, itself on a continuous basis. The frequency of the pulses determines the thrust uh, or the average thrust that is created by the engine and essentially depends upon the volume of the combustion region and the length of the jet uh, tail pipe. So, the volume of the combustion chamber has to be uh, calculated and designed and built accordingly uh, to the amount of thrust that needs to be created. Now, pulse jet essentially as I mentioned usable at subsonic speeds uh, essentially is uh, not a very fuel efficient device and uh, not really in terms of efficiency competitive to the various kinds of turbojet engines or turbofan engines that we have studied and hence uh, essentially there is no thought of using pulse jet engines for regular powering of uh, aircraft uh, because uh, they are not really uh, fuel efficient in terms of uh, their usage. Let us take a look at uh, the steps by which pulse jet engine is indeed operated you need a spark plug to initiate the combustion process uh, <coughs> once the valve is closed. So, there has to be a synchronization between the closure of the valve and the initiation of the spark plug. This needs to be done in a synchronous manner right in the beginning of the uh, initiation of the engine. The combustion occurs in an enclosed chamber and is approximately a constant volume process. Now, this is in contrast to the fact that in all other jet engines including ramjet engines, the combustion is in a constant pressure process. So, in a flowing fluid, uh, the combustion is essentially uh, designed and uh, carried out in a constant pressure process. Uh, so, the thermodynamic process that is deployed there is constant pressure. In pulse jet, it is back to constant volume which is what the piston engines often use the IC engines uh, use uh, for uh, 100 years now. Now, the combustion phenomenon as I was trying to explain a little while earlier is essentially uh, nearly an explosion in the sense that the volume uh, in the enclosed volume it raises the pressure and temperature to very high volumes. Since it is an enclosed volume as soon as the temperature is raised uh, as per the gas laws, the pressure would immediately be raised to high values. Uh, one needs to make a calculation of what are the values uh, they would be indeed attaining and as a result as, as a consequence of that the jet would be created. The high pressure and temperature then forces the flow through the gas uh, to the tail pipe um, and the nozzle and as I mentioned before this uh, needs to be initiated in the right in the beginning with the help of uh, compressed air source. In case the pulse jet uh, goes out of operation or for some reason gets extinguished during flight, it can be started all over again, but you need the compressed air source all over again to initiate the process of the flow through the pulse jet engines uh, without which this flow uh, may not be established through the tail pipe and through the nozzle. So, this compressed air source which you have 
uh, is required essentially to initiate the flow, but it, it is required essentially to reinitiate in case the pulse jet engine uh, gets extinguished for some reason or the other. The evacuation of the combustion chamber results in a pressure drop as we can well imagine. The indeed as soon as the pressure is dropped, uh, it opens up the spring loaded valves. The valves which I mentioned and showed earlier are spring loaded. They open up which means as soon as the pressure across the valves drop below a certain value, the valves open up and it allows the air to come in and fill up the combustion chamber all over again. So, this is the process that is going on intermittently in pulses and that is what creating the pulse jet. The spring loaded valves are normally closed and open only when the pressure difference is attained. This pressure difference and the opening and the closing of the spring loaded valve has to be accurately determined by calculation and hence this is a, a, a tie up between aerothermodynamic calculation and the mechanical design of the spring loaded valves. That needs to be done extremely accurately for the pulse jet engine to be operated in a uh, continuous basis uh, for creation of thrust. Let us take a look at uh, uh, a picture of how the pulse jet engines indeed operate. The flow comes in through the valves, it uh, goes into the combustion chamber, combustion is uh, uh, initiated and hence as we mentioned a small uh, mini explosion occurs increasing temperature or pressure. Then this hot jet gas is uh, released through the tailpipe and it comes out as a jet through the nozzle. As soon as this gas has been released from the combustion chamber, the pressure here falls. As soon as the pressure falls, these valves open and the fresh air uh, comes in again. So, this is the cycle by which the pulse jet indeed operate uh, continuous uh, or intermittent rather uh, exit of the hot jet and entry of the cold air coming in from the front. This is the kind of uh, German Henkel aircraft which used the pulse jet engine uh, uh, during the world war. Um, they used it quite uh, successfully for flying of the aircraft. Um, it was indeed a very successful uh, deployment of pulse jet engines for uh, aircraft flight. This is a modern pulse jet powered aircraft, more of an artist's impression rather than a real aircraft flying. As you can see here, it is a modern aircraft which is uh, uh, likely to go uh, uh, subsonic or even uh, supersonic and as you can see here, it is uh, it's indeed a military aircraft in which the pulse jets, two pulse jets are deployed on, on the top of the um, aircraft and they are powering this uh, aircraft which has a front mini wing and then a large uh, wing with all kinds of control surfaces. So, this is a, a, a possible pulse jet application of uh, uh, pulse jet engines in modern aircraft likely to be a uh, military application. So, we have gone through various kinds of pulse jets and ramjets and have seen that uh, they can be used uh, in modern aircraft if we want to most likely they are likely to be used in uh, military applications for certain uh, uh, military kind of aircraft, uh, where as, well, as we one can well imagine the pulse jet engines and the ramjet engines are much lighter. They are much lighter than the various versions of turbojets or turbofans that we have studied. There is no compressor, there is no turbine, there is no heavy combustion chamber either. So, it is so much lighter and that itself is a very attractive proposition even if their fuel efficiency is much lower than that of the various kinds of turbojets and turbofans that we have seen. So, the lightness of the engines make them extremely attractive proposition for some of the modern aircraft uh, usages and that is what some of the people are thinking that they could be used for modern uh, military aircraft applications, uh, special aircraft applications. Uh, we have not uh, quite seen the applications as yet, but it is possible that with improved design some of those applications can be seen in near future. We will continue with our uh, discussion on ramjets and uh, 
and we shall later on go into discussion with reference to scramjets uh, over the next few lectures. So, we will continue our discussion on ramjets and then scramjets over the few next few lecture series.